Where's the worst weather in the solar system? To have weather, of course, you need an atmosphere. Tranquil as it may look, the red planet is a candidate. A Martian dawn. In 1976, America soft landed two space probes on the planet, and this is what they saw. A lifeless desert, rusted red by iron oxide. Midday temperature, minus 24 degrees Fahrenheit. Atmosphere, carbon dioxide, less than 1% of Earth's. What they didn't see were the great dust storms that blow up. So big, they can be filmed from Earth as they envelop all of Mars. Storms of another kind are more common on Earth, but they're not record breakers. Not even the mysterious sprites recorded recently streaking high into the atmosphere. For real weather, we need a giant planet. When Voyager scanned Saturn, it had to focus through a smog that all but obscured the weather. In a wide shot, the weather belts are just discernible, plus three of Saturn's moons. The belts are streams of clouds, mostly blowing eastward around the planet. A white spot, just visible in the upper right, is a storm the size of Europe. Through a false color filter, we see another storm. It's the dark spot below the yellow band. This Voyager close-up shows the storm with a pair of smaller blow-ups. Here, the thin wavy line of a jet stream, the sort we get in the upper atmosphere of the Earth. On Saturn, they blow it over a thousand miles an hour, five times faster than on Earth. These pictures show the ultimate in Saturnian weather, a storm that gathers once in 30 years. It happens when Saturn's closest to the sun, the great ammonia blizzard, at its height, it girdles the equator. Farther out, when Voyager had Neptune in its sights, there was even worse weather. The upper cloud was benign, but Neptune generates more heat than it absorbs. The result is dynamic weather and storms like the wizard's eye. And upward from the eye, the great dark spot, a tempest the size of Earth. Voyager made time-lapse images of the spot. Around it, gales blow at 1,200 miles an hour, the fastest in the solar system. Mysteriously, by 1994, the spot disappeared. Some astronomers speculate that it wasn't a storm, but the site of an impact from space, a scar that healed. Wonders of the Universe will continue on TLC. Wonders of the Universe continues on TLC. For the biggest storms, we drop in on the biggest planet, Jupiter. Jupiter seethes with weather, driven from within by the planet's own heat. This is the mother of all storms, the Great Red Spot. It's over twice the size of Earth. 
It's been raging for at least 350 years. The red spot is a whirlwind of high pressure. But how did it form? A weather band simulated on computer shows how several storms chasing one another around the planet can eventually merge into a single system, a storm like the red spot. One reason for Jupiter's turbulent weather is the speed of the planet's rotation. A day here lasts less than 10 hours. The largest planet has the shortest day. Tiny Mercury, by contrast, spins so slowly that its day is two-thirds of its year. On Venus, a day is longer than a year. To turn once on its axis takes Venus longer than its orbit of the Sun. A day on Halley's Comet can last over seven Earth days, but its year is three quarters of a century. A day on our moon is just over 27 Earth days, virtually a month. A month, that's where we get the name from. It's also the time it takes the moon to orbit our planet. That's true for the moons of Jupiter. Indeed, for all moons, a moon day equals one orbit of the parent planet. Ganymede is the biggest moon in the solar system. It's a satellite of Jupiter. At nearly 3,300 miles across, Ganymede is larger than Pluto and Mercury. The smallest satellite is Dactyl, a rock less than a mile across that orbits not a planet, but an asteroid named Ida. The smallest planet is Pluto. Just half the width of the United States, Pluto tumbles through the outer realms with its companion world, Charon. Jupiter, of course, is the biggest planet, so immense that the Earth would fit inside it more than 1,300 times. The largest object in the solar system is the Sun. Spanning 865,000 miles, it would take more than a million Earths to fill it. Yet a tiny chunk of ice can spread itself even wider. As a comet nears the Sun, it sheds a tail of dust and gas that can stretch more than 100 million miles across space. But this is the prize of the solar system. By leaving our planet, we appreciate it more. Our Earth is the ultimate superlative. From our seas emerged life, a chemical accident seemingly denied elsewhere. That life has spawned humankind, a species unique in developing thought, the very epitome of a superlative.